Hey everybody, this is your favorite Wild PK. Yes, it is Lady Abdullah and I have an excellent guest with us today. She is actually a new friend of mine and I feel like she's like a little bit of my heartbeat. This is Heather Marsh, you guys. She is fantastic. And I've never, there's not too many people in the world where when you meet them, you just feel the genuine connection. And she's just as bubbly as I am. She's just as charismatic as I am welcoming she's so warm and I mean she's truly a sister's keeper like I just I'm in love with her already she doesn't know that like she's also my sister she doesn't know that yet but you guys welcome 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 Heather Marsh I don't like to tell anybody's stories so you go ahead and introduce yourself as well hey guys um my name is Heather Marsh and um, thank you so much for having me on here, Alicia. I love you so much already. And we hadn't even known each other that well. Um, <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am a mom uh, of two boys. Um, one um, is a teenager and one is a preteen. And I'm married. Um, we'll actually be married 14 years this June. So I'm super pumped about that. Yes, girl. Yeah. And so... Um, I think the the main thing that I would want everyone to know um, that just really um, explains who I am to my core is I love being surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. I am a people person. I love hosting stuff at my house. I it love does. being surrounded <laughs> by women um, who are not like me. Um, I would much rather be in a room of women who are not like me and get to know them. And um, that's just, I feel the most joy and I feel the most myself when I'm in a room full of women. Um, and so I really feel like that's where the Lord has me right now is just um, meeting new women, um, doing ministry with them, even um, some who are not even safe, like just bringing them in and um, showing them the love of Christ like that. That is who I am. Um, and I know we're always changing the older we get, but that's one thing that says the same for me. Um, so, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Heather, you guys just don't understand. So. Um, the reason why I have Heather here this time is really to talk about, um, I was invited to a women's group that she has, a women's community group that she has at her home. And, you know, you know how churches are. We like to kind of be completely separate. Like, this is my mm -hmm. home church. I only do what my church does. But here she is. She's not that you're new to the area because you're technically from Warner Robins, mm -hmm. but you went away and you came back. And the first thought that you had was to bring everybody together. I mean, what made mm -hmm. you come up with the idea of starting a women's group? So I actually came on staff at Harvest Church. Um, and when I was first hired, we really weren't sure what I was going to be doing. Um, they kind of just wanted to see what my gifts were and, um, and then go from there. But one of the very first things um, that I was able to help with was groups. And of course, if I'm helping with groups, I'm going to lead one. Right. Um, and I've always enjoyed that regardless, though. I, that's always been something that I love to do, um, even before moving here. Um, but I knew that I wanted to do a women's group. And um, part of that, I guess, passion to do that, to start that, um, I feel like there is a little bit of this um, spirit of disconnect between churches in this area, mm -hmm. um, more so than where we move from. Um, I, I don't know what that is. It's just a feeling of, it's almost like competition. And mm -hmm. I hate to say that, but it is. And so one of the things I knew that I wanted to do is I wanted to have a group of women um, yes, from Harvest, um, of course, representing my church and of course doing um, life with people in my church, but I also wanted to welcome other women from other churches, um, whether they were part of a ministry or not, bring yeah. them with you, bring your ministry with you to my house. Like, I don't care. Like, I love to um, just get people together. We are one church. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter what building we're in or what location mm -hmm. we're in. We're one church. And when we start to really um, live that, yeah, then, that's right. Um, gosh, I'm telling you, this area will shake, will shake heaven. I'm telling you, if we, oh. if we can just think like that. And so um, that's just my vision is I don't care where you come from, what church you go to, or if you even go to church. I mean, I, I might have some in my group who are not saved, 
Right. Um, and, and that's okay with me. The end result is God, I pray that, that this makes an impact on them and that they will choose him. And so, so yeah, that's a little bit about why I wanted to do this. That really was the driving force for that. And I absolutely love it. You guys, I was able to um, go to one of the group meetings, I think two Sundays ago, and it was just refreshing. You know, there was, I mean, the, the, the image that sometimes people put out about Christian women is that we're like, mm, mm, I don't have time for this and I don't want to be a part of this. And, oh, if you're not the minister, you're such and such, I don't want to talk to you. And it's like, no, we're all just regular women. Like we want yeah. to hang out with each other. We want to be friends with each other. And it was really cool to see the different churches that were represented as well. Um, you know, I, I won't list any, but there was at least six in your house. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. no location that's doing that. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's so beautiful about it. Like you're really having church in your home and, and it's not even like a full church service. You're just really ministering to our hearts and to our minds and even giving us a platform to speak. So what would you say has been the, be the, the biggest impact that you've seen in having these groups so far? Um, the, I, I might cry like telling you, but um, that's all right. I had a lady tell me that she had been part of a church for six years and never felt comfortable enough um, mm. making friend like godly friendships. Like um, sometimes it takes us inviting someone who maybe not everybody has the same personality that me and you do. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who are sitting on the back in the very back of the right. sanctuary. Um, they're only coming on Sunday mornings. It's not that they don't um, desire a relationship with the Lord. It's just that the way that they're built, they're just that shy type, right. you know, um, they don't feel comfortable, um, sharing their life with people. They don't feel comfortable even just talking to people. They're not social and it takes us inviting them personally and right. like not letting go, like texting them, like, Hey, you coming tonight? Like, I don't let it go. I mean, I'm not going to go overboard and like make somebody feel uncomfortable, but, but I want them to know that I want them here and that they belong right. here. And, um, so that's been the biggest impact. She says impact for her, but really, oh my gosh, like I get teary eyed just thinking about it, you know, that, um, oh. that all it took was somebody saying, Hey, come to my house. Right and now she has this community of women who are just loving on her and for the first time in six years. Hmm. And so, um, for me, that's really special. Oh my goodness. I know everybody, if you're watching, get your tissues. Cause that got <laughs> me too. Cause I mean, that's such a real thing that we all deal with, you know, especially yeah. if you go to a big church, sometimes you go Sunday after Sunday and it's not that you mm -hmm. want to be noticed or you want attention, but you know, when you come in, not that the greeters don't do their thing, but yeah having a connection outside of the church. And that's what you're doing. That's what you're creating an opportunity yeah. for someone to connect outside of the four walls of, you know, like you said, she was just going on Sunday. She was doing technically mm -hmm. the right thing, which is showing up. Yeah. And you're just hoping that you can find some real connection, some intimacy with somebody that, you know, it's like, Oh, I have a partner to do life with and yeah. accountability as well. I mean, with the work that you're doing, how is it impacting your family as well? I mean, because you're doing, you're opening your whole home up to all of us. And <laughs> I know. Um, okay, so I'm just going to be transparent. Um, yes. It It's hard. It's hard. One, because my husband is also in ministry. We're both in ministry full time. And, you know, so not only are we doing it Monday through Thursday, but we're doing it on Sundays too. Right. in the morning and then everyone comes to my house on Sunday nights um and Sundays we like to come home and go to sleep after church. yes so ma'am in, in my house you know it's not always uh how I would like it to be when everybody comes over but um I mean it can cause like pressure and stress and um 
you know, when you're saying yes to certain things, you're saying no to other things. And right. sometimes it's to my own family, you mm. know, um, and it's finding a balance. It's sometimes it's hard to find a balance. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, um, I won't stop this group. I won't stop it. And me and Jeremy will work together to make sure it's happening. I mean, he, he leads his own group too. And during the week. And so it's important. And so we're not going to stop. We just have to balance, find the balance in it. And sometimes that takes a little bit, but it's not all rainbows and you know, That's I mean, right. it's really not mm -hmm. ministry's hard and it's, it's not, um, a 30 hour a week thing. It's a 24 right. seven thing. It um, is. you know, when someone need, and when something's going on in my group, if somebody calls me at any time, like I'm gonna be there for them, like mm -hmm. it doesn't stop. And so that can, that can cause, um, you know, stress and, and all those things, but it's so worth it. Oh, and it's I love to, to hear that though. I mean, you're making it real because a lot of times now I call myself the wild PK because I was a, a wild preacher's kid, not in yeah. grade school. Now let's get it. Let's get it right. I wasn't a wild preacher's kid in grade school because I did not want nobody talking about me. All of my stuff happened when I was mm -hmm. at college. Can't nobody tell my story. <laughs> but me. And, you know, being a kid in that environment, even with um, you know, you have young babies. It was, mm -hmm. it was challenging because it's like, for me, it felt like everybody else came before me yeah. and, and trying to find that balance. Now, of course, old school way of doing things. They're like, Oh, I'm doing this for God. So you just going to have to understand. And, but I can yeah. what I hear from you is, is that you're wanting to find the balance. You're wanting mm -hmm. to not just be present for everyone else, but even for your kids. And that's a blessing to even be yeah. aware of that as well and to the person out there who feels like ministry is easy it is not mm -hmm. it is time consuming it I mean it even takes money to do yeah. what you're doing I mean you're meeting at your home mm -hmm. welcoming anybody it's not like mm -hmm. it's you know invite only mm -hmm. you don't know who's coming in like yeah <laughs> that's a miracle within itself so let me ask you this what with this group what do you see it turning into going into the future? I mean, because I see you doing a lot more, but I, you know, I don't want to, don't want to push you too hard. What do you no. see it going? Um, I am under the umbrella of of my church too, so um, I you know, but I think that the Lord is definitely, um, I think before anything, um, we're gonna connect with other women's ministries. Um, I'm hoping to like do some fun events together. Like, um, I don't know if you remember, but we did like, um, uh, what do we call it? A scavenger hunt. That's my favorite. Um, yes. Where we went and it was just my group. And then we competed against another group at Harvest, another women's group. And, um, and they were older than us and they had the best time and we did too but I'll just tell you a little bit about it real quick and then I'll go back to answer you're good, you're good. but um so we had this list of things that we had to complete in an hour and a half um and we went to downtown Warner Robins and so I mean there was some random stuff in there like you had to do this dance and video everything had to be videoed and recorded and so you had to create a dance create a cheer like with your group mm -hmm. like everybody you had to pump somebody's gas you had to put somebody's groceries in their car um you had to pray with um a family and take a picture with them. I mean all these things um we just went out in the community and did this and it was so much fun but when we got done I said how cool would it would would it be if we got the women's ministries women's groups from all the other churches in Winter Robins and we competed against each other right and right. we would all be out in the community like doing those things and I mean I it truly one of the ladies that we prayed with um she ended up coming to church um mm -hmm. on a, on Easter yeah. and so it does make an impact and these things we can still have fun we can still be in community together and we can also love on the community right just doing things like that so before anything I just see us um, just kind of forming and teaming up with other women's groups, um, in our community. Um, I would love for it to blossom into one day, maybe like some type of women's ministry. I don't know who mm -hmm. knows. Yeah. Um, 
I would love that, but I don't know if that, if that's reality, but, um, but yeah, first and foremost, I just feel like doing some fun events with, um, with other groups. And of course, I think that will grow outside of my home. Oh my um, yeah, I mean, I really do. I, if we all, if everyone that comes to my group all made it on the same time, we would be not be able to be in my living room, right. but you know, life <laughs> happens. And so some people get sick and some people have ball games and all those things. So we're not always all together. Um, it's kind of sporadic. So, um, I think one day it will be too big to do in my living room. I pray that that happens. Oh, we might be getting lawn chairs and sitting in the back. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You guys, I would encourage you to, what's the name of the group on, that you have on so, Facebook? So we're called the WG, the women's group. Um, we do have a private um, Facebook page just because we, we do put like prayer requests and stuff on there. So I do keep it private. But if anyone um, is wanting to be a part of that, then I definitely can add them um, onto our private group. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Heather, I just, you know, what you spoke about, about bringing the community together. I mean, it speaks volumes to your heart. Like you first said that, you know, you just love being around people and you're seeing mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the spirit of, to me, even though it's competition, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, separation you know just being in your own mm -hmm. corner I'm gonna be over here and uh well I can't do so yeah. what they're doing but the reality is that when we get to heaven we're supposed to be doing this together anyway mm -hmm. so why yeah. not bring a little bit of heaven to earth and do it together yeah. do life together and that's what you're asking everyone to do let's do life together yeah and I also feel like that about mm -hmm. my conference Bill talk conference because mm -hmm. for me being a PK, it was like, if you're not doing it at this church, or if you're not doing it at your home church, you can't go. And yeah. it's like, well, I'm doing this conference. So anybody can come because yeah. I want women from every background, from every church, whether you go to church or not, like, I want you to come and learn something. And if at the end of this, you receive Jesus, that is the ultimate goal. Like you said, absolutely. somebody yeah. needs just <laughs> one invite to change their mm -hmm. whole life, their whole situation. So, I mean, from my heart to yours, I appreciate you for what you're doing and hitting the ground mm -hmm. running. Like you're not even trying to just have a conversation about it. Like you, you really was like, let's start this thing. And I no, I'm ready. It. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Heather, I mean, that's our time. Um, let Thank if you. you have any hashtags or um, at signs if you're on Facebook TikTok let the people know where they can find you and how they can even get information about joining the group yeah absolutely so I am on Facebook Heather Marsh um, I am on Instagram um, it's band press 13 um, and please you can also message me I love people messaging me um, I'll get back to you very quickly um, and I can give you all the information of what my address is. And we meet on Sunday nights at my house in Perry um, at 6 p.m. And we do eat dinner. So y'all come on. All y'all ladies, come on. Yeah, we had tacos last time. Mm, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, of course, thank you once again, Heather, for being with us. And you guys, make sure you go ahead and message Heather Marsh on Facebook. Look for this gorgeous face. Yes. And <laughs> guys, this won't be the last time you see her. I'm probably bring her on here because her testimony is powerful as well. That will have you in tears because I was crying last time I heard it. So we'll probably do that next time. Is that okay, Heather? Sounds good. I would love to do it. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, you guys remember Pillow Talk Conference is going on June 24th, 25th. Make sure you get your tickets now. They are on Eventbrite. And if nothing else, keep being wild for God. Thank you.